Well, one of the things that uh, happens in Amina's voice, one of the bonds with her friend, as you mentioned, um, is that no one can pronounce their name correctly. And this is something that they've gone through with all of their schooling. What was your experience like in terms of your own name? Yeah, and it's funny now that I think about my name in the context of other people I've met you know, since who have much more difficult names to pronounce than mine. Um, but my, my name is, is Hina, actually. It's pronounced with almost like a light I. Um, but it's also henna, and I am named after the, the same flower that makes the henna tattoo. And uh, when I speak to my, my husband, for example, whose name is Farouk, which is much more of a mouthful, uh, he would tease me and say, you know, your name wasn't even that hard. But people would automatically stop at during roll call. Um, anytime we had, you know, a new, when I had a new teacher at the beginning of the year or I had, you know, a substitute, they would, they would pause. And I think just seeing Hannah Khan was something unfamiliar. And they wouldn't often know how to pronounce it or they would say, you know, Hina or, or how do you say this? And, um, you know, and I think when you have a bunch of friends who, who have names that are easy to pronounce, like Allison or Jessica or whatever, you, you, you do feel different that somebody can't say your name. And my friend in school had the same experience, and she and I were actually right, right after each other on the alphabet. So we would know when that was coming up, and, and it was something that we did have in common and could commiserate about. And I think it's a really important point for um, teachers, the impact of of being able to say a name correctly and pronounce it correctly, taking the time, as opposed to the impact of not doing it can really, it can really have an impact on how a child feels about themselves, right? I think so, and I think a lot of times kids don't have the confidence to correct a teacher. So I think it's, it's good to not only Tr make a few attempts to get it right, and of course if it's a difficult name you might struggle, um, but then to check and, say, and ask, am I saying this correctly? Because if you aren't, it's unlikely that a child would, would, at least after some time has passed, have the nerve to say, by the way, you know, you're saying my name completely wrong. And even when I was a junior in high school, I had a, my chemistry teacher called me Hina the entire school year. And I didn't have the, the courage to tell her that it was, it was wrong, but every time she said it, you know, it would sort of grate on me. Um, and of course, you know, by then I was, you know, I was a bit older, but I think for younger children, I think it's even harder and it can be alienating to feel that like someone's not taking that time to, to you know, identify you by your name, which is the most you know, profound thing about you, really. We were speaking with a teacher in our last event, and she is teaching her kids how to become advocates for themselves. And that's one of the things that she's talking about, is how can you um, have a conversation with a teacher if they're not pronouncing your name correctly. So yes, I, as the ESL teacher, could go in and say, you're not pronouncing his name correctly, but what if you begin to learn how to become an advocate? So that's an area that she's identified in, in teaching her kids and giving them the confidence. So I think that's great. It's, a, it's an inspiring example. 